We recently got an update on the release date of the Wrath of the Druids DLC for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, informing us that it will now release on May 13 instead of the previously announced release date of April 29. Aside from that, however, there's a ton of information out there regarding the DLC, such as plot details, major characters, and gameplay elements. Since Ubisoft hasn't released a separate video explaining all the changes you might see in the upcoming update, here's a video from me that goes over everything we know about it as well as some added speculation regarding the narrative. First things first. The DLC will see Eivor and some of the characters from the settlement travel to Ireland for a reason that hasn't been disclosed yet. While the description of the DLC does mention forming alliances with Gaelic kings, it also mentions the presence of an ancient druidic cult that Eivor will have to deal with. This druidic cult, known as the Children of the Anu, don't exactly relate to the Templar Order that we are familiar with but act as a different group entirely. However, I wouldn't be surprised if the Children of the Anu have had some form of contact with pieces of Eden in one way or another. As for the aspects that are more grounded in history, Ireland at this point had a relatively peaceful situation when it came to the Viking invasion. Since Vikings had already started settling in cities such as Dublin and other areas since the year 845. Which means at this point in time, the Vikings were more interested in forming diplomatic connections and making a home for themselves rather than pillaging and raiding as they had been doing previously. Which is further proven by historical study that Gaelic kings were known for using foreigners, in this case Vikings, as mercenaries of war. One of the main figures during this time that utilized the so-called mercenaries of war was the High King of Ireland at the time, Flan Sinna, who is also confirmed to be one of the main characters in the DLC and supposedly, he's also one of the first characters you meet in the DLC. Something to note here is that he only became the High King of Ireland in the year 877 and another historical character, Barid Mackimar, the then King of Dublin, is said to have a major appearance as well. Putting these two together, it's easy to pinpoint the time period the DLC will take place in. Since Flan Sinna became the High King in the year 877 and Ima died in the year 881, the DLC will most likely take place between that specific time period based on the historical characters the DLC seems to have confirmed so far. Another aspect that further provides merit to this speculation is that the main game ends somewhere near the end of 877 and the start of 878, which would mean that the DLC would take place after the events of the main game, narrative-wise. However, if it does turn out that Eivor visits Ireland between 877 and 881, that would mean she would not be present at the historical Battle of Haddington where Alfred the Great was successfully able to push the Vikings back. Originally, I thought that Eivor would set her rise towards Ireland after suffering that great loss against the Saxons, but since the game seems to start around the point we meet the High King, the inclusion of the Battle of Eddington seems very unlikely. In fact, Eivor leaving her clan when it needs her the most would further give merit to a recent glitch that saw Gunnar being angry at Eivor. Going back to a point I made earlier in the video regarding the Vikings being interested in settling down rather than pillaging and raiding, the slave market of Dublin was notoriously famous for buying and selling of slaves and one of the major groups of people being involved in this were Vikings themselves. While it is highly unlikely that Eivor's clan will take part in this activity, I am curious to see how exactly Ubisoft portrays this and if Eivor will have any sort of impact on it especially since Dublin is confirmed to exist in the DLC. Another way the Vikings found themselves integrated into the Gaelic society was by marriage. These new types of citizens were called Norse Gael and the previously mentioned King of Dublin was a Norse Gael himself. Suffice to say, it seems like the different cultures would be clashing much more intricately in the DLC than the main game since Vikings were openly accepted in Ireland unlike the situation in England. If nothing else, I am certainly looking forward to how exactly the Ireland DLC will portray its atmosphere especially since I found it lacking in the main game when it came to different cultures interacting with each other. Now of course, a fresh rich narrative is always appreciated but the gameplay elements have to offer something new as well and it seems like while Hala is trying to deliver on all the stuff that previous AC games offered, it also provide entirely new features such as new types of weapons which is something that I don't think I've seen being done in previous AC games. On top of providing brand new armor and additions to existing weapon types along with new cosmetic items and skills and abilities, the DLC will also feature a new weapon type, that is sickles in the island DLC as well. It will be interesting to see how exactly this type of weapon pans out and if it will be anything similar to the sickles we used all the way back in Assassin's Creed Origins. There has been a lot of talk about short swords being included in the game as well but I think that's reserved for the upcoming France DLC if the leaked trophy list is anything to go by. I will link both the article that mentions the historical figures and the trophy list in the description below if you want to check them out for yourselves. But for now, that does it for this video. I'm assuming that we'll have a lot more to talk about regarding the DLC soon because the release date is only a few weeks away and marketing for it has to pick up soon. But I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did then be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you want more and check out my other videos while you're at it. 
I'll be back sooner or later with another video and I hope that I get to see you all there.